Okay, so a huge question a lot of people want to know in the mountain biking community is, can you swap your SRAM centerline rotors out for Hope float rotors? Now these are brand new rotors, they're 220 millimeters, so they are huge, and they haven't been out very long. But what I've heard is that in the past with some of these Hope float rotors, these little rivets right here make contact with the inner surface of your caliper right here because they stick out a little further. Now I just installed two bolts here to hold it in place and I put it in place and there's no rubbing at all but I will need to adjust the caliper in just a hair to allow it to go smoothly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the rest of the bolts to hold the rotor in place and then I'm going to loosen up the mounts right here and try to adjust the brake caliper so it doesn't rub at all and I think everything's gonna work out just fine. Now, I don't think that's gonna be the case for most people trying to make this conversion because I think if you go with an older or a smaller style Hope rotor, it could hit these little bolts right here. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this up, get it installed and just see what happens. I have the new rotor installed. We're gonna to try to mount it in place. I've already loosened this caliper right here. There we go. Check that out. Smooth as can be. Now I just need to tighten up the caliper and we'll be set to go. Now the way you do this is you loosen this, hold the brake down, and then tighten it while you're holding the brake lever down. Check that out. Again, these are the new Hope Float 220 millimeter calipers and you can see that it fits perfectly and there's no rubbing there at all between the rivets holding the rotor in place and the caliper and boy does that look good okay so I did the same thing on the back and unfortunately there is a little bit of a clearance issue you can see the caliper is rubbing right here against this rivet. So I just need to shave that down a little bit, which there should be plenty of material there to shave down. I've seen a lot of people do this. And I don't think I'll need to shave the bolts down. I think I'll just need to shave that part down. But yeah, that back one's gonna rub slightly if I don't. It'll slowly start to eat away at the caliper mount so I'll probably just grab a Dremel real quick and shave that down just a hair and we should be fine this is all aluminum so I don't think we'll have any problems there but I don't know you know part of me is thinking maybe we'll just put the standard rotor on the back and keep the other one up front that is so close all right let me figure out what I want to do
a little bit more. Okay, so I filed it down a bit more. I don't want to file it down too much, but honestly, I didn't remove too much material. Now it's clearing it. There's no contact there at all anymore. And now I need to loosen the caliper and adjust the brake itself. Okay, so there it is. Everything's all set up, no more contact. Perfectly smooth. I don't know if you can see, but the rotor no longer makes any kind of contact with the side of the caliper. That's where it would make contact right there. And it is completely clear of it. Very cool. So there it is, all set up. Have 220 up front, 200 in the back. Hope float rotors with SRAM Guide RE brakes. They are the brakes that come standard on this Cannondale bike. I'll probably upgrade them at some point in the future, but for now they seem to work well. It's actually the same downhill code brakes that used to come on some downhill bikes. So they're very, very strong brakes mixed with the standard guide brake levers up top but works really well. Pretty happy with it. We're gonna take it for a ride and break them in. Okay, so I just took it out for about 30 minutes and bed the brakes. Basically made sure that the new pads that I put in the calipers seat properly with the new Hope rotors that are on. Stopped really well. Um, you know, I really can't give you a long-term evaluation of them yet. The reason why I did this is because my SRAM rotors that were on here essentially needed to be replaced. They were starting to squeal really bad and I decided to go to a little bit more aggressive compound for the brake pads themselves. But I'll tell you that uh, they stop really well. I'm not gonna say they stop significantly better than the center lines that I had on here, but they definitely stop as well. They are very quiet right now, which is not something I can say about the SRAM. The SRAM brakes are pretty loud from the very beginning. Whenever you're doing something like this, it's vital that you don't touch the actual rotor surface where the brake's gonna make contact because you can contaminate it. So that was something I was careful of the entire time I was doing this. And uh, you know, after making a little modification to the inside mounting portion of the guide caliper, everything seems to work really well. I am very, very pleased with this modification. And I think it looks fantastic. It really, really gives the front wheels kind of that better look to them overall. I chose to go with the black. They have all sorts of different colors, but black to me just looked a little bit more stealthy, but at the same time gave the front area a little bit more style, I'd say. But I'm pretty happy with them so far. Again, I uh, took it out for about 30 minutes just to bed the brakes in. That's essentially going relatively quick, then coming to a aggressive stop several, 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 several times to make sure that the brake pads themselves properly groove into the rotors and again everything worked out really well anyways guys i got these actually from a company overseas because it was hard to find them here in the states so these came from chain reaction um, which is a company i believe in the uk but it only took like three days for them to get here very very happy with them so far um, definitely wanted to make them look a little better if I was going to replace them. The SRAM center lines are relatively inexpensive and these were on sale so these were only like $10 more per rotor so it only made sense. I was really hoping they'd fit because I know again that these right here would make contact with the old Fox 36 which they don't anymore because they're definitely thinner and they'd make contact with the post on the 
brake caliper itself, which they're not doing anymore, at least on the front, it never made contact. There's plenty of clearance there, so you just don't have to worry about anything making contact on the front. It's a direct drop-in, and that's for the 220 millimeter setup. I don't know if it's gonna be the same if you have a smaller rotor up front. If you're running like a 200, it might make contact because you don't have as much material right here these are closer to the edge and that might be an issue. The back is a 200 mil rotor and it was making just very, very little contact. Not enough to like stop the wheel aggressively when it was spinning, but definitely enough to rub. And I had to shave that down a little bit. At the same time though, you know, if I ever have a problem because of what I did there, if I see anything significant in terms of wearing or that potentially breaking, I'll just throw a different set of calipers on here and call it a day. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's not truck or RV related, but this is a very, very commonly asked question on mountain bike forums, if you can do this upgrade. And I just wanted to confirm, at least on this setup, you can on the front, pure drop-in. On the back, five minutes of grinding and you're in good shape. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.